right, so we're, we're mostly all engineers here, right? So let's take a look at some numbers first. Um, Europeans living with diabetes. So there's about one in 11 European. I don't want to make any politics, but Europeans, just general Europe, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I've been told it's a touchy subject. So <laughs> Europeans living with diabetes, one out of 11. Uh, Europeans li living with asthma, one, one out of 12. And I'm pretty sure if I ask this room here, there's what, maybe 200 people? So if I ask who, who has uh, asthma, like there's probably, we see a few hands. Um, so that's fine, you know, that's, that kind of goes close to the statistics there. Arthritis, Europeans living with arthritis, there's one out of five that will eventually, um, usually starts at an older age. Um, <laughs> I'm starting to feel it in the mornings, it's a kind of a, guess I'm getting at that age. So about one in five. And people living with mental illness, also one in five. So that's a little bit more of a, um, you know, I'd say shocking stati statistic. So. so mental illness is one of the most prevalent um, chronic health conditions, but we just don't talk about it, right? I would have never dared ask me, hey, who here lives with a mental illness? <laughs> Nobody would have raised their hand, right? We don't talk about it. It's a big taboo. So today I'm here to talk about my own experience. I'll talk more specifically about burnout, which is uh, one of the many uh, mental uh, illness that, um, that it covers and under that statistic. Uh, mental health covers a lot of different things. It covers um, things like depression, schizophrenia, OCD, and so on. But I'll focus on burnout. I'll focus on my own story. Um, now here's one thing, I'm not a mental health professional. Um, I'm only here to talk about my own experience. So your own experience may differ. Um, and, um, and if you have any question, I mean, <laughs> don't rely on me, just go ask a, a medical professional, it's very important. The reason why I do this talk though is to kind of help to break that stigma around mental health, especially mental health in the workplace. Like I said, we don't like to talk about it, uh, so by doing talks like this, I, I, I'm hoping that it will help to open up conversations. Now I'm not used to talk about myself. I am, you know, you're a typical software developer, introvert, um, you know. Uh, I'm much more comfortable talking about containers than I am talking about myself. But we'll see how this goes. Uh, let's give it a try. So, a little bit about me. Hi everyone, my name is Joel Lord. I am, I am French Canadian. That's the uh, little charming little accent you might have recognized there. I currently live in Ottawa in Canada. Um, and I, I, I do some talks, I, d I work as a developer advocate for Red Hat, so I, I spend a lot of time traveling, going to conferences, um, just like this one. Um, if you ever want to get in touch with me, Twitter is always the best way, so that's Joel with two underscores Lord. Whenever I have Twitter notifications, I get really, really excited, um, and yes, that's a gift of me, <laughs> why not? Um, Burnout is a heavy topic for the first talk in the morning, so I thought I'd lighten up a little bit. All right. So burnout can be kind of hard to define. It's, it's not like having a flu, right? It's not like you wake up one morning and you start coughing, or you wake up one morning and you're just, you're, you're not feeling well. It goes, it, it takes some time, and it, it, it spreads along a long period of time, and it's a little bit like, Whenever you go to the movie theater, right, and they, they slowly fade out the lights, and you only realize that the lights are out once they're actually out, but it's really hard to say at, one, at what point they started fading those lights. A little bit like, like that image, you might not have noticed, but it was a very nice image at the beginning, and slowly it faded into like this post-apocalyptic uh, image. So it's a slow fade, and it's really hard to, to see when it actually started or not. But it's easy to see the end result, though. So for me, um, at one point, I woke up one morning, and <sighs> everything was hard at this point. Um, I, I had to get out of bed and, and drag my body out of bed. It was so hard. I had no motivation. I had to take a shower. So, ugh, really? And I got into the shower that morning, and I started crying. I had no clue what was going on, but I was just crying. And it was, it was this really weird feeling, because I, I mean, there was, I was completely losing control of all my emotion. I didn't know what was going on. Now my wife, who had been incredibly <laughs> supportive during that period of time, um, she'd been telling me for a while that something was wrong. Um, but, you know, 
I'm strong. I'm not going to go see a doctor. I don't need that. I'm just, you know, a little tired. Um, but when, I, when, I, when that happened that morning, I kind of realized that something was wrong and maybe it was time for me to actually face it. So what is burnout exactly? So burnout is a state of emotional, mental, and physical exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress, and it manifests itself in ways including anxiety, loss of motivation, confidence, and even degradation of physical health. Um, in my case, so it, it kind of mimics a lot of symptoms of, of depression, so it's kind of hard to diagnose um, when you're just looking at the symptoms. In my case, I had a complete lack of motivation. Like, I didn't want to do anything, never, ever. Um, and a lot of anxiety. I started having so much anxiety. And I started getting physically sick as well. I had a flu, but it lasted over a month. I mean, that's, that's not normal. When your, your, your regular common flu lasts over a month, you know, you should probably talk to a doctor. Um, I, had, <laughs> I had so much heartburns, like so much stress. I actually bought Tums at Costco. <laughs> I said, no, there's no problem. I'll just take more Tums, you know. <laughs> Nothing's wrong. I should have put an image of that dog, you know, eh, it's fine. Um, and I was having so much trouble controlling my emotion. That was actually one of the hardest part. Everything was kind of like this roller coaster of negative emotion. I, I went through, through anger and then sadness and then aggressive and then, oh, super anxious all of a sudden and then and impatient and, and discouraged. And, and, and it's a really weird feeling when you can't even control your own emotions. I felt like I was almost losing part of my mind, you know. And the lack of motivation, I, I've touched about it, but it was, I didn't want to do anything. Like really, my friends would call me to go and have a drink and I'd, I'd find an excuse. I just, I just didn't have any energy to do anything. So most of my weekend were just spent in bed, you know, watching Netflix. Someone once told me that a willpower or motivation is, is a little bit like a bucket of water that you have in the morning. So in the morning you wake up, you have this full bucket of water, and, and it's up to you to decide how you're going to spend that water throughout the day. So that's why they usually say, you know, all the things that you don't really like doing, like going through your emails and blah, um, you should do early in the morning when you still have some energy and some willpower and some more water in your bucket. And as the day progress, you should do things that are more fun, that don't require as much energy to get started, right? So you'll do um, coding towards the end of the day because then you can really get into it and a lot more fun. And some days you wake up and the buck might be a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe you have young kids and they kept you awake all night or uh, maybe you're traveling from Canada and you're jet lagged and uh, maybe there was a social last night and you have a beer too many uh, or maybe it's a mix of all of that. But sometimes the bucket is a little bit smaller. But ultimately, it's up to you every day to manage how you're going to spend that water. Now, when you're burnt out, your bucket feels like it's full of holes. You wake up in the morning, and already you start thinking about all the horrible things that are going to happen today. And, and already, it's hard to get out of bed because there's like all that energy that just drained out. And you drag yourself out of bed, and it's like, oh, got to take my shower. That was before I worked remotely. <laughs> uh, gotta take my shower, uh, gotta go to work, get into my car, and stuck in traffic, and put your damn turn signal on, and the fucking light is green, move already. <sighs> and by the time you get to the office, I mean, there's absolutely no energy left to do anything else. So that, that's kind of how I felt um, when I was at the worst part of my burnout. So where does it come from? So burnout can be prevalent in organizations that promote hero culture and where employees maintain a strong sense of duty or feel they have no alternative in the employment market. Now, that last part might not be as true. Um, I think we live in an industry where we have a lot of chances to move, um, although sometimes we feel like we're kind of stuck in our job. And there's also that hero culture that we have in, um, in the tech industry. Uh, Jessica kind of touched on it yesterday where, you know, everybody has to be the best and, and somehow everybody has to be a ass to everybody else. So the tech industry tends to have that, uh, that, that hero culture. High number of working hours is often sees, seen as de desirable as well. 
And when you're done with your work, you know, what should we do? Well, we should go back home and work on a blog post based on whatever we learned today, or work on that open source project because we need that for our portfolio. And there's always something else that we need to do. At that time, I was doing about 70 hours a week for my job, and it never seemed enough. I could never accomplish what I needed to do in my days. And so I started working at night, because that makes a lot more sense, right? Because I didn't have any interruptions back that, at night. So, and no, don't do that, please. Not very healthy. And it's also that startup culture where everything moves at 2,000 uh, miles per hour. In my case, there was also that false sense of responsibility. I was working as a manager back then, and uh, my manager would, would ask me to put together some project or put, put, up, put up some new processes for different things, but I didn't have any power to change anything in the organization. So whenever I tried to push something, um, immediately somebody else would come in and destroy all the work that I did. So this type of thing kind of leads to a toxic work environment, which is definitely not very good. So a lot of people think that or associate burnout with just being tired. That it will go away with a little bit of sleep. Well, once you reach the state of burnout, usually it's a little bit too late. Um, I mean, you will need to recover at some point. But, um, but you know, it's not just getting a good night of sleep that will fix everything. So occupational burnout is considered a real disease. It's recognized by the ICD as its own uh, ICD code recognized by the wor World Health Organization. Um, and it can be diagnosed with the Maslach Burnout Inventory, which is a series of questions that you rate from zero to six. Uh, the questions themselves depend on your profession and some f a few criteria. Now, <laughs> when you go see a doctor and because you feel like something's going wrong, be careful on how you will answer those questions. Be honest. Um, so one of the questions, and I remember this clearly, the doctor asked me, um, what was the question there? Um, are you having difficulties getting along with your colleagues? So I thought a little bit, and I was like, well, you know, today I got into a fight with only two of my colleagues. The yelling lasted about 10 minutes each time, so that's 20 minutes out of 24 hours, so rarely. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so try to be honest. I mean, <laughs> you're not, you know, you're only lying to yourself at that point. If you're unsure whether you should actually see a, uh, a professional or a, um, a mental health professional, the Mayo Clinic released a quick survey that you can do to decide whether you should or not uh, see a doctor. So uh, those, some of those are some of the questions. Uh, do, have you become cynical or critical at work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Do you drag yourself to work and have trouble getting started once you arrive? I mean, outside of Mondays, right? Um, have you become irritable or impatient with coworkers, customers, or clients? <laughs> I have so many stories. Uh, <laughs> do you lack the energy uh, to be consistently productive? Have your sleep habits or appetite change? So it ha can have physical effects as well. Have, are you troubled by unexplained headaches, backaches, or physical complaints? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you might be experiencing job burnout. Be sure to consult your doctor or a mental health provider. However, some of those symptoms can also indicate certain health conditions such as thyroid disorder or depression. So if you feel like something is wrong and you're saying yes to at least one of those questions, well, maybe it's time to actually think about it and go talk to your doctor. All right, so what should you do um, if you feel like um, you're going through burnout? So first of all, uh, go and see your doctor. Uh, I said it many times, and it's very, very important. Um, actually, do so. I, I, I think a lot of... Um, especially people my age. <laughs> um, but we feel like we shouldn't talk about that stuff and we should be strong, right? And we shouldn't see a doctor. And it's very important that you actually do so. And, you know, they might recommend uh, or prescribe some medication. Um, if, if you have any doubts, ask questions. Just ask them questions. They are health professionals. That's what they do. Um, ask them questions. Is that something that might be addictive? Is that, is that a medication that I'll be eventually be able to uh, get off of? Um, so think about it, what it is that worries you, um, and, and just ask those questions. They'll probably also recommend therapy. Um, you should do it, definitely. One thing about therapy, though, is, um, and, and that people don't say enough, is shop your therapist. Um, 
it's really hard and if you want to get some real benefits out of a therapy you need to be with someone that you trust and you might have to shop a therapist to actually find one all right but what else can you do um, apart from seeing a doctor well do a little bit of introspection that's always a good start think about what it is that put you in this position where is it that you get that pressure from and don't just go and blame others like think about it really and maybe it's just you that can't say no to anything and maybe that's something that you actually need to work yourself or maybe there are some external factors that are put to putting you in this situation so do a little bit of introspection and really really think about what it is that is causing you this stress take a break um, of course not all employers will give you a full month off but um, you know, sometimes you might have uh, personal days off, um, days that you can take without any questions asked. So by all means, take them. You should take them. Maybe take a long weekend. Take a Friday, a Monday off, and go, go somewhere where nobody will bother you. I like to do canoe camping with my wife, and it's in the middle of the forest, of the Canadian forest, and it's <laughs> exactly like you would imagine. Um, and there's no cellular data, no cellular connection whatsoever. And it's great because I can't answer any emails or anything. So I kind of need that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, do something like that and try to disconnect a little bit from, from work and other um, worries that you might have. Oh, do less. <laughs> That's obvious, right? Just do a little bit less. Um, but by that, I mean try to, try to offload some of the work that maybe you don't have to do. Here's an interesting story. When I started dating my wife, <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to impress her, and I, I, I would do the cooking, and like every night, I'd, I'd do dinner, prepare dinner, and well, she wanted to be like a traditional, you know, wife, and she did all the dishes after, after the meals, and, and we did that for a while, until we actually talked about it, and I hate cooking, I absolutely hate it, and she loves it, uh, so it turns out that I was able to do a little bit less by delegating that to her. Now, I know what you're thinking. I do the dishes now, right? <laughs> so, so, but that's something that I actually enjoy doing. I find that it's a really relaxing way to end uh, a meal, to actually just clean up everything and everything is nice back to the original state. I think it's, uh, I don't know, I love doing the dishes. And, <laughs> and it's, but it, w but it was an interesting discussion. And, and when we realized that, and ever since, I've <laughs> never cooked dinner anymore. Um, and, and she never does the dishes. So I'm doing a lot less because it's not as much effort for me. So, you know, try to see if there's anything that you can offload. Um, in, a, in a work environment, maybe, maybe you can ask someone else to take on that, that code review that you don't want to do that today. Um, you know what, ask that junior in the team to actually do that code review from that senior developer because that will offload some of the work for you and it will probably be a very beneficial experience for the other two parties involved. Um, say no. <laughs> This one is there mostly as a reminder for myself. If conference organizers ask you to fill in for a talk, you know, maybe say no. Like it's <laughs> no, that's not, it's not true. But um, you, don't, you don't need to be a superhero. I mean, you don't need to justify whenever you don't, don't want to take on a task. Um, and you know what? Saying no sometimes actually increases the values of your yeses. So say no from time to time is very, very important. All oh, right. Save your fucks. I mean, you can't give a fuck about everything. Right? So you kind of need to save some. Choose your fights. You won't be able to save the world by yourself. So you won't be able to please everyone. Just pick some fights, some that you can win, ideally, and bring them to an end. So you have a limited number of fucks that you can give in a day. So, you know, use them wisely. Ask for help. That's a really, really hard one for me. But reach out to people. Reach out to people that you trust. Reach out to talk to your spouse, your sing significant other. Um, reach out to your friends. You know, kick yourself in the butt and just call one of your friends and go out for coffee and, and talk to them. Just tell them that you're going through a rough patch. You know, I don't need to go through the details, but you never know what's going to come out of that. Sometimes you might find someone to uh, un unexpected support. Do some exercise. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, seriously, well, it, it, it's been proven. Like, you should do exercise. It's good for you. It does endorphins and things in your brain. And it's um, I'm not the exercise type. <laughs> who, who am I kidding? 
uh, one thing that was very important to, for me, though, is find something that you like to do. Find a hobby. Try to find something that is completely different from your work and that you actually enjoy doing. Uh, for me, it was I started brewing some beer. Um, <laughs> They usually say, yeah, don't drink too much when uh, you're going through depression or uh, burnout. But um, yeah, I, I only brewed the beer. <laughs> so I started doing that. And whenever I have, and this is a picture of me, my, my cousin and my brother, and we're, we're our brewing partners. We, we brew big batches of 20-gallon beers every you know, few weeks. And um, those are the only morning where I actually set up my alarm at 6 in the morning. I get there as quickly as I can. I get very, very excited about that. And if you're not familiar with brewing beer, um, essentially the process is you get there, you drink a lot of beer, and you watch some water boil during a few hours. That's pretty much all you do. But whenever I have brew days, I sleep so well at night. Might be the beer drinking. <laughs> but it's also the fact that I spent a full day doing something that I really enjoyed with people that I really love, and I don't have to worry about anything during those days. So find something that you actually like doing and, and pursue that. All right. So if you see people going, or if you want to help people that might be going through burnout, so what can you do to help? Well, there's a few things that you can do as an employer, for, uh, for starters. First of all, uh, you might want to enable remote work. Um, there's a lot of controversy around that. But remote work can definitely help people if they need to take an appointment with a health professional during the day. Um, they might, bless you, they might not have to justify that or they not, might not have to uh, feel like they have to justify that. Offer some personal time off. It's very important. Let your employees take some days off without asking for a justification or asking for a doctor's note. Just let them sen take some days off. Have an employee assistance program. Those are very, very important. If you're not familiar with an employee assistance program, it's basically just a phone number where you can call and get all kind of, uh, of help, um, whether it's from uh, mental health or um, even sometimes legal stuff. Now, if you have an employee assistance program, be really careful on how you promote it. I used to work at a place where it was a very nice open floor office, right? And right in the middle of that, this floor, there was this big column um, and there was a poster and the phone number for the employee assistance program was right there in the middle of the room. Now, for some reason, go figure, I never saw anyone actually go up to that post and take a phone number and note and, you know, give them a call afterwards. No, you, know, you want to put that in a place where people will have a little bit of privacy. Um, good places are, you know, maybe in the bathroom stalls. Um, so people can actually just, you know, take the number and note and then they'll be able to call later. So be careful on how you promote it. Make sure that it's available and that people don't have to be uh, shy of taking that number as well. Uh, train people to the mental health first aid kit. So there's a program called mental health first aid, kind of like the uh, regular first aid programs, but aimed towards uh, mental health. So you can take a look at that. And there's the uh, mental health in tech uh, guidelines for mental wellness in the workplace, which was published by OSMI. Um, I'll come back to OSMI later, but you might want to take a look at this. As a manager, all managers here, lead by example. That is so important. <laughs> don't send emails at 2 in the morning. I don't care if you think they don't have to answer at until 7 in the morning. Just don't send them. Schedule them for 8 or 9 in the morning. If you don't need an answer now, don't send the email now. End of story. If you send emails at 2 in the morning, your employees will feel like they actually have to answer back at this time. Take some days off, take, some, take your vacation, especially in tech where we have this unlimited vacation policy. You know, take your days off and make sure that everybody knows that you actually do. And talk about mental health in your workplace. Now, as a colleague, there's a few things that you can do as well. Um, mainly language matters. Be careful on how you address different situations. Um, don't call people crazy and things like that, which uh, might not be very good. Um, there's a great, a great guide that was published by Bell Canada uh, they have a program every year, uh, which is called Let's Talk. The link is there, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> there I'll, be, uh, I'll publish everything on Twitter afterwards. Um, and be kind. Mostly, just you know, don't be an ass. Um, listen to people. Don't jump to, co to conclusions. Things like, ah, you'll get over it, or just relax. <laughs> Usually don't help. Um, you know, ask instead, like, or say, I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Ask how you can help. 
and break the silence, talk about mental health in the workplace, that's very important. So the talk is called Post Burnout Thoughts. So what now? So I've been through that. Um, and I found out that it wasn't only negative. I mean, sure, when you're, when you're in the worst part of your burnout and, and you feel like everything is, is dark and it's, it's not a good place to be in. But you know what? Things will get better. It'll only get better from there the moment you start talking about it and start and, and the moment you reach out for help. <laughs> so it's what helped me to find this job. That was a very good output for me. So I took that time to do some introspection. I thought about what is it that I like doing? What is it that I actually enjoy in my work? And what is it that I don't like? So everything management out the window and a lot of things like mentoring and coaching people are things that I like to do. So that's why I do what I do right now. And it brought me so much closer to my friends and family. I got to, I, I got to recognize who was my real friends. Um, they, were there to, they, they were there to help me out whenever I needed. A lot of times, without me asking, they just knew I was going through a rough patch, and they'd reach out to me and help in various different ways. So now I live a much better balanced life. So I think overall, the output was very positive. Sure, it wasn't a lot of fun when I went through it, uh, but now that I think of it and that I look at, at it, it was, it's, the, the result is a lot more positive. So I'll leave you with this quote from Christopher Noring, a friend of mine, which actually lives in London here. Um, and he said something along the lines of, if you don't get burned out by working for you, you get, you get it by working with, for someone who doesn't appreciate your work. So make sure that the extra hours that you're putting in are for yourself. So if you want to write that blog post after you're done with your work, sure, go ahead, but make sure that you do it for yourself. If you want to learn that new shiny framework that they've been talking about at the conference today, sure, but make sure that you actually do it for yourself and not because your employer expects you to learn about it next week. So I talk about this. Um, I do a little bit of volunteer work for the Open Sourcing Mental Illness Group. Um, so you might want to take a look at their, uh, their website. They have a lot of very good reference there. Um, so I'll leave you with the final resources. So the OSME website, Mental Health First Aid Kit, Bell Canada Let's Talk, and everything will be published in one single link at the end. So with this, thank you very much. <laughs>